Welcome to my review of the wireless G50. Oh. Wait a minute. Something doesn't seem right here. Okay. I see what happened here. Let's try that again, shall we? Hey, what is going on, guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel, and I hope you've all been doing well. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Razer Basilisk Ultimate, a fantastic wireless gaming mouse with all sorts of great features that I've had the pleasure of using in my couch gaming setup. This gaming mouse initially caught my eye due to many various reasons which we'll discuss in this video. At first glance, this mouse looks very similar to the popular G502 gaming mouse, and I'm sure Razer did take some inspiration from Logitech when designing their Basilisk Ultimate. As a big fan of the G502, it's a big reason why I was drawn to it and decided, okay, I have to try this out. However, there are some noteworthy differences between them that we'll go over, so don't think of this as a one-to-one -one copy. And these differences are ultimately what could lead someone to choose one mouse over the other. A little background about myself for those who may not have been following the channel since the early days, or if you're new here, which by the way, a warm welcome if you are, and make sure to subscribe, I greatly appreciate it. On my channel, I've mostly focused on computer hardware and components. Discussing CPUs, graphics cards, motherboards, tackling topics from various performance benchmarks, and talking about hardware news. Computer peripherals like mice and keyboards are also a huge part of the PC gaming industry, although not the primary focus here. With that said though, I do every once in a while like to review some peripherals that I use in my day-to-day -day life. I've reviewed a number of keyboards on the channel, some headphones, controllers, and other various accessories as well. However, I've actually never reviewed a gaming mouse on the channel simply because I didn't have the need to switch for my G502. Since 2014, I've been using Logitech's G502 as my daily driver, as this mouse had replaced my old Logitech G5 that I bought back in 2008 when I got into PC gaming. Since the G502 gaming mouse has always been regarded as one of the best options in this segment, and has been praised everywhere on tech forums, I never bothered to give my own thoughts on it. Since you were all probably already well informed on it, I thought it would have just been a waste of time. For me personally, the G502 seemed to fit my hand very well, the features are great, and I had grown, well, dangerously accustomed to it. Obsessed. To the point where I was never really interested in trying anything else out in the market. In fact, when my first G502 started giving me issues, well, I just bought another one. I never went out of my way to buy anything else, and since the G502 was the only mouse I used for the last 6 years, it never prompted me into doing any sort of gaming mice reviews. Slash our G502 Master Race, am I right? Jokes aside, I never stepped outside this G502 comfort zone. That was until earlier this year. Razer's Basilisk Ultimate gained my attention after hitting the market earlier this year, and I have to admit, I've owned and have been using this mouse since April, so this review has been long overdue, but better late than never, right? Oh, and I also happen to own a G502 Lightspeed, so I'll be making many comparisons between the two mice. So, starting off, let's address the elephant in the room and talk about the Basilisk's shape and design. If you weren't a tech enthusiast in this space, you could easily mistake these two mice for being the same. This mouse borrows the same shape silhouette and a lot of the same design elements as the G502. Like I mentioned, it's particularly why someone who might be a fan of the G502 would be likely to check out this mouse. And yeah, I know some people will complain and say, where is the uniqueness factor from Razer? Why blatantly just copy someone else's design? And I can see where you're coming from, but what I will say is, you don't always have to approach every product and try to reinvent the wheel. You can take an already well-established design and try to improve upon it in your own way. That's still a viable direction, if you ask me. That's exactly what Razer has done here. They have made their own changes that do make the Basilisk Ultimate unique and in a good way. The overall body of the Basilisk is contoured from the front to the back, with many of the same angular proportions as you'd find on the G502 near the front. The right side of the mouse is slanted on a decline from the center and more pronounced towards the front. The Razer Basilisk Ultimate measures 13 centimeters in length, 7.5 centimeters in width, and measures 4.2 centimeters in height. So it's not the smallest mouse, but it isn't extremely large either to the point where portability could become an issue. On the left side, you'll see the side curve inwards a bit where you can rest your thumb with a flat side skirt extending to the bottom. It's also got soft touch rubber and has a grippy texture feel to prevent slipping. You've also got decent sized side buttons which are spaced out quite well from the thumb rest area to prevent accidental clicks. 
I like that. And you'll notice this rubber cover. And here you can take this cover out and install this paddle, or as Razer calls it, the hypershift, that can act as an extra button. This is pretty cool because if you're familiar with the G502, it's got a DPI shift button, also known as a sniper button, near the thumb rest area where you can hold down the button and it will instantly lower your DPI when you need it for say when you're using a sniper rifle because you need to be very accurate. This paddle can act in the same way or you can reprogram it to function as something else which is convenient. For that matter all the buttons on this mouse can be reprogrammed. The Basilisk Ultimate has 11 reprogrammable buttons through their software which we'll talk about later in the video. Although I personally found the placement of the paddle to be a bit further than I'd prefer, just trying to reach it was a bit awkward and it would have been nice if it was a bit longer. So I don't even use it but I also hardly ever use the DPI shift button on the G502 either. Just right above the front and back buttons we've got some RGB lighting and speaking of RGB the Basilisk Ultimate has 14 adjustable zones, and I have to say the lighting implementation from Razer was excellent. There's more lighting compared to the G502, and it can get quite bright, so I usually have it at around 35% brightness. And that's still plenty bright for me in a dark environment, that is. The zones were all integrated with the mouse, and it really makes it stand out in a very attractive manner. As we move to the top of the mouse from the lower area, we've got the Razer logo, and that also lights up. Similarly to the G502, the Basilisk Ultimate has these glossy accents and stripes that extend around the shell of the mouse. I think they're a nice subtle addition to the overall look of the mouse and complement the matte black aesthetics of the mouse while blending in nicely without looking too tacky. Near the front of the mouse you've got your DPI adjust buttons, followed by a fairly large scroll wheel which also has some of that nice grippy rubber texture, and the sides of the scroll wheel do also illuminate. On the front of the mouse, just underneath the scroll wheel, you have a micro USB port. Micro fucking USB. Are you serious, Razer? Come on, guys, it's 2020, and for a product that cost me almost 200 Canadian dollars, for a flagship product, there was absolutely no excuse for them to not implement a Type-C port instead. Even Logitech is guilty of the same crime. And when I can get a cheap $60 Chinese mechanical keyboard that has Type-C, there's literally no excuse for them to be sticking a micro USB port on these mice. Anyways, this port can be used to charge the mouse with the included braided cable, which I have to say is quite long at 1.8 meters, and it's pretty lightweight too. On the right side of the mouse, you've got more of that same grippy, soft touch rubber texture with some more RGB glow underneath the right click button. And that's really about it for the overall design and shape. It's fairly simple with the black theme, but with the RGB and glossy accents, it does give it a premium look. But as you can tell, it's very, very similar to the G502. Now in regards to materials, the Razer Basilisk Ultimate is pretty much made completely out of plastic, but that plastic doesn't feel cheap or weak. It's got a very smooth feeling to it, while at the same time feeling quite robust and very intact. The buttons feel dense and not hollow, so it does add a nice premium finish to it. However, I did find that the coating and the finish on the left and right click buttons did attract a bit more sweat and finger oils, more so than the Logitech G502, so I found myself cleaning it every now and then. But utilizing plastic for the construction of the mouse was a good choice as it helps reduce weight and that's definitely what's desired from a gaming mouse. The Razer Basilisk Ultimate weighs just 107 grams while the G502 is a bit heavier at 113 grams without any weights. Which by the way there aren't any weight adjustment options on the Basilisk. But that's a difference of around 6% which shouldn't really be that noticeable, but I honestly perceived the Basilisk Ultimate to be much lighter for some reason. I think it comes down to the weight distribution being a lot more evenly spread out on the Razer, whereas with the G502, it felt heavier at its core and the back, and thus creating this heftier feeling. At the bottom of the mouse, we've got six super slick PTFE mouse feet, and boy, are these things slick. These things are fantastic and very easily help the mouse glide around. Seriously, it felt so seamless. Doesn't matter which surface, whether it was a hard surface or cloth mouse pad, they made it seem like the mouse was skating on ice. They definitely felt a lot more slicker than the feet on the G502. One thing you'll notice on the top area on the bottom of the mouse is that there's this resistance wheel. And what that does is that it allows you to adjust the tension of your scroll wheel. So if you want a lighter feeling scroll wheel, you can go for that. Or if you want more greater resistance, you can adjust for that as well. I thought that was a great addition as they don't have a hyper scroll wheel like the G502 where you can have it scrolling freely, but this works too. At the bottom, you've got a profile switch button and power toggle. And you might have also noticed these two metallic contact points. These are for Razer's charging dock, 
where once you're done using the mouse and or need to charge it, you can simply plop the mouse onto the dock and it will get charging. However, I bought the Basilisk without the dock. That's because at the time, the one with the dock was going for an extra 50 bucks, which just didn't seem worth it to me. And I mean, sure, it's convenient to easily charge it like that, but that markup was just crazy. So all I got was the mouse along with the receiver and a charging cable, so I can't really comment on the dock. Oh, and on the right, there's a small little compartment to where you can store the wireless USB receiver in case you're on the go and you don't want to lose it. I like that. But since we're on the topic of feeling and using the mouse, let's talk more about the ergonomics and how it feels to use the mouse during gaming. Well, the first thing I want to mention is that while holding the mouse, it actually fits my hand a bit better than the G502, which I was surprised to find since their shapes are so similar. I thought I wouldn't really notice the difference. However, the Basilisk Ultimate has a slightly wider stance and the mouse's hump isn't as extruded, so therefore, resting my hand on the mouse felt very comfortable. The other thing I want to mention was that because of its wider stance, I was able to rest my pinky finger more comfortably on the mouse without having to worry about friction or drag from the mouse pad. I'm someone who uses a combination of a fingertip or claw grip to hold my mouse in, and this mouse worked very well for that style. I also like the wider and bigger left and right click buttons on the Basilisk Ultimate as opposed to the limited area on the G502. This allowed for more freedom of placement for my fingers. I don't have the skinniest fingers, so I just found the Razer to be a bit more accommodating here. The lighter weight, as I mentioned earlier, also goes a long way for me. Now, I'm not someone who yearns for an extremely light mouse, I actually prefer something with a bit of weight to it, so I can actually feel like I'm holding something, but nothing too heavy. This mouse feels like it's perfectly in between for my weight preferences. I barely feel like I'm moving something, and I'm sure those super slick feet also play a big role in facilitating that. So I've had no issues playing games such as first person and third person shooters with this mouse. I find I can track my enemies accurately and the weight is not in any way a hindrance to my movements. I found gaming with this mouse just as enjoyable as the experience I had with my G502, if not better. So overall the ergonomics of this mice are excellent, with a lightweight, well thought out placement for your fingers and super slick feet which will allow you to use the Basilisk Ultimate for hours on end without any sort of discomfort. One slightly negative thing I will say is that the left and right click buttons on this mouse feel a bit mushier than the ones in the G502. The G502's left and right click buttons feel more tactile or clicky. It's not a deal breaker by any means, they still feel good and responsive. I just wanted to point out that the click feedback was immediately noticeable when switching over and did take a little while to get used to. The reason for this is because Razer has opted to use optical switches instead of your traditional mechanical switches which are found on the G502. Now let's talk a little about these optical switches because they're unique and were one of the major selling points for me. You see, if you just go and do a quick Google search about Logitech's G502 double clicking issues, you'll see hundreds of results with users complaining. This is because the Omron switches that Logitech used aren't so durable. I have personally haven't encountered this problem, but it does seem quite widespread, so it was a concern. With optical switches, Razer is claiming to have implemented the world's fastest switches in a gaming mouse. Optical switches, as the name implies, use an infrared signal that are sent to your gaming computer which tells it when a button is pressed. There's no physical mechanical parts here. A shutter opens when you press the button, which then releases an infrared signal captured by a sensor. According to Razer, the delay is only about 2 milliseconds, which is a 3 times improvement over traditional mechanical switches. Just as importantly, due to not having mechanical parts and just sending these wireless electrical signals, this will drastically reduce wear and tear. With a rating of 70 million clicks, these are the most durable switches out there. And just the nature of how they work, they shouldn't be susceptible to double clicking as mechanical switches are. Since mechanical switches are prone to having this bouncing effect which can result in unattended clicks, and therefore your drivers must do the work into filtering out any unintentional presses. But as I just mentioned, this doesn't seem to work so well with Logitech. So that's one of the reasons why the Razer Basilisk Ultimate appealed to me so much. I wanted a mouse that would be reliable for me in the long run, and while I'm not going to sit down and test 70 million clicks, 
What I will say is that I've had zero issues in regards to switches acting up or double clicking since April of this year, so hopefully that's a good sign. Since we're on the subject of technical specs, let's also talk about the Focus Plus optical sensor Razer is using in the Basilisk Ultimate. With this sensor, they're claiming their latest mouse sensor has the highest spec in the market with a 99.6% resolution accuracy for best-in-class performance. The sensor has one of the highest DPI capabilities, allowing you to set the DPI all the way up to 20,000, which is impressive, but I don't even play out a tenth of that, so it's kind of a moot point, but it's still there if you need it, and there are five DPI levels available. There is also onboard memory available, so you can continue to enjoy your own settings even on another PC. Now this sensor also has smart tracking, which essentially allows the mouse to calibrate the sensor on the fly, regardless of whatever surface it's being used on. The sensor also has the capability to adjust itself during a liftoff, so when you need to lift the mouse up from the surface to readjust positioning, and with asymmetric cutoff, you can adjust the height, and it will continue to keep tracking your movements, and once you reach a certain threshold, it will stop. I actually found the tracking to be quite precise, responsive, and it does help a lot because I'm someone who plays at a fairly high DPI, not 20,000, but this usually results in me moving the mouse around with my wrist the majority of the time instead of actually moving the whole entire mouse all over the mouse pad, and I'll often have to lift the mouse up off the mouse pad for readjusting the position. Furthermore, Razer also claimed the sensor has motion sync, which basically ensures your PC is getting the latest updates for movements. Now this is a wireless mouse after all, so in this review, I can't leave out my experience with how it performs in that regard. And I have to say, wireless technology has really come a long way since the last time I tried wireless mice. The Basilisk Ultimate leverages Razer's hyperspeed wireless, and you can go and read their marketing materials on it and see their claims about less than 195 microsecond response rate and how it's 25% faster than any other wireless gaming technology and all that good stuff. Look, I don't have the tools to measure their latency claims, so I can't really validate any of that stuff, but what I can do is share my anecdotal experience with you guys. And it's been a very positive experience. I honestly feel like I'm using the mouse wired. One of the reasons why I bought this mouse was so I could use it in my couch gaming setup with my mini wireless gaming keyboard. I sit about 7-8 to eight feet away from my TV and the receiver, and I haven't noticed any bit of lag at all. Mouse movements and button registration feels instantaneous. The latency is very low, and just being able to have a true wireless couch gaming setup with the keyboard and mouse feels so awesome. I will be making a video hopefully sometime near the future about it, so stay tuned for that. Now speaking of wireless technology, obviously there's going to be some concern about battery life and how long it will last. The battery life of the Basilisk Ultimate is also excellent. I can use the mouse for several days before I'll have to put it on charge. Razer claims it has a battery life of up to 100 hours without any lights on, and I can definitely attest to that. And if you bought the mouse with the dock, then it'll make your life so much easier because all you have to do is simply just plop it on the dock and you're good to go the next day. So, so just get into the habit of charging it once you're done and you really shouldn't have an issue. The Razer Synapse is surprisingly a pretty decent software. I found it wasn't as bloaty as some software from other vendors and didn't unnecessarily hog up system resources to the point where it would degrade gaming performance. As I'd mentioned with all the features earlier such as customizing RGB, adjusting DPI and making custom profiles, Along with fine-tuning the sensor, all of that was quite easy to do, the user interface is friendly and easy to follow. What I was a bit annoyed at was how it pestered me into signing in with a Razer account, but you can bypass that and just use it in guest mode. Still, I think that's kind of dumb that a software whose sole purpose is to just customize your peripherals is asking you for an account and personal credentials, so please don't do that. After talking about all the specs, the features, the ergonomics, and my personal experience with the Razer Basilisk Ultimate, I'm sure you're wondering what the verdict is. Well, what I will say is that if I had to choose now between the Logitech G502 Lightspeed and the Razer Basilisk Ultimate, I would definitely choose the Basilisk Ultimate. Mostly due to the fact that it uses more durable switches that shouldn't be prone to developing a double clicking issue, the wider stance and slightly larger size of the Basilisk Ultimate feels very comfortable for my hand, along with the lighter weight and slippery slick PTFE feet which go a long way for me. However, do keep in mind that this mouse is quite expensive. At around 200 Canadian dollars without the dock, that's definitely on the higher end spectrum of gaming peripherals, especially for a mouse. But the competition also isn't any cheaper either. However, if you're looking for a fantastic wireless gaming mouse that's comfortable to use, has excellent build quality, low latency with a long lasting battery, 
the Basilisk Ultimate is an excellent choice, and it does get my recommendation if you're okay with the steep price point. I hope you guys found this video to be informative and helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description on ways to support the channel and for my other videos. If you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one.